Now, the search for a new chairperson of the Electoral Commission appears to be heading home. Information picked up by Johnny suggests a senior law lecturer at the University of Ghana, Professor Henrietta Mensa Bonsu, is the favorite among four individuals under consideration for the job. The others include founder and executive director of Civil Society Group Institute of Democratic Governance, CDD, Dr. Iman Alakwete, deputy chairperson of the National Commission for Civic Education, Kathleen Adi, and executive director of the Center for Democratic Development, Dr. Henry Kwesi Prempe. There have already been mixed reactions with these names likely to take over from former EC boss chair uh, um, Madame Charlotte Ose. Let's do some analysis. They have been joined in the studio by Joe News's editor and head of our political desk Evans Mensa so we can delve into the qualities of these individuals. Um, Evans, what do we know about these people? So um, let's start with Henrietta Mensa Bonsu. He's a professor at the University of Ghana Law Faculty. The, um, she specializes in criminal law. Um, if you recall, a couple of years back, she was Ghana's nominee uh, to be to, to the ICC, the International Criminal Court. Uh, originally, had been had been suggested by John Dramani Mahama, but when Nanado came in, Nanado kept uh, pushing in terms of trying to get her nominee confirmed. Nanado clearly. Um, liked her as, a, as an individual, appreciated her qualities, and did everything he could uh, last year to get the, the AU and the COAS to back her uh, to get onto the ICC. ICC. In fact, uh, Nanado succeeded in convincing the ECOWAS bloc to support her. Um, I recall he sent the uh, ambassador at large, Edo Mahama, to, to the uh, ECOWAS headquarters and convinced the ECOWAS chair uh, who did not back her, although ECOWAS did. She lost out on, on, on the ICC uh, nomination and confirmation. But clearly from what we hear, the, she left an impression with the president who, who believed that she's qualified, obviously qualified. She's done, she's, she's been, a, she's, she's been in, law, in the law uh, fraternity. Okay for more than 35 years, uh, called to the bar in the 80s and, had, and thereafter went to teach. She, from what our sources tell us, is the front runner to be, to be the next EC chairperson. Remember that we also, sources tell us that Anado has already consulted quite broadly on this, including speaking to the former EC chairman, uh, Dr. Koja Farajan, mm. consulting him about the possible names. So that's that's a case of Professor Harita Mensa right. Then there are three others that, because remember that they, there's a, that three vacancies, the chairperson's position and the Deputy two deputies. deputies. And names such as Dr. Iman Akwete of IDEC has come up again very strongly, but those two names, Harita Mensa and, and mm. Dr. Akwete have and been strongly mentioned. Before I even let you go on, let the, the, this is uh, uh, pro, um, Dr. Akwete, the quick, overview of who what, what, what is done so far obviously we know he's the executive director of IDEC he's a political scientist he's got PhD in international politics and development uh, that he obtained at the University of Stockholm in Sweden in 1994 and um, Evans I'll have you go on with this yes and of well, Dr. Quitte people forget but played a key role in the 2012 elections, and when things became pretty heated, mm -hmm. he, together with other uh, civil society forces, worked together with the Peace Council uh, behind the scenes, working with uh, Afarijan to try and get the parties to see reason. Remember, he, he put together the uh, the peace summit in in Kumasi where he got all the candidates mm, on one platform to make pledges right. uh, to peace. So behind the scenes, he's done a lot. Mm. And those who suggested his name are aware of that background uh, in terms of working with the Electoral Commission to try and his passion in the past has been taking the tension out of our politics. And he's been working with the EC in the past to try and see how that can happen. And mm. so the electoral reforms, he was very, he was one of those uh, key figures that championed it. Um, and then you obviously you have um, the uh, Professor H. Chrissy Prempe, who oh. recently took over uh, the, the rings at CDD. CDD. And his public advocacy is, is, is unparalleled. He's also a, a Yale graduate. Mm. 
mm. just like Henry Tamen Sabo, so he's a Yale graduate. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, when it comes to the area of, of law. Mm. And I, as I mentioned, CDD is a very recent thing for him. Professor Jumabudi was there, and when Professor Jumabudi was exiting, he, the mantle fell on him. So he's not been there for long. So if he gets the nod, it means he has to quickly leave the CDD. And you see that uh, he has, he has a, a solid academic track record. Mm. Professor of Law at uh, a certain Hall University School of Law, uh, Newark, oh. New Jersey, lecturer of uh, Constitutional Corporate and International mm -hmm. Business Law courses uh, since 2003. Mm. So he has that. You, 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 you get a sense that whoever takes that position needs that law background. But then Evans, I'm wondering, that he seems to be uh, exposed a lot outside Ghana. Mm. So even though he's got all of these, um, you know, to his credit, he did all of these outside Ghana. But you need to understand the very, the nitty gritties of, the, of Ghana's body politic to be at that position. I would, I would say he does, because when he, he started engaging public, at least since I recall, I recollect him, uh, public engagement really played out mostly on Facebook and then subsequently he was physically engaging uh, I remember his, his presentation he did, I think, on behalf of the civil society when the special prosecutor's uh, bill was being finalized mm -hmm. into law. Uh, and so he's had, he's had that. And okay. he's, uh, he's had a lot in terms of interactions with the political players, both on DC and MPP, as far as that law is concerned. But also his public advocacy on, on Facebook, as a trend in public, it's, 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 has been very, very strong. So I don't think that will be an issue for him. I, I think it could be a plus because he has, it brings international experience to bear. Mm, I, and I was saying that in comparison to the other people on the list. Yeah. If you look at the other people on the list and the roles that they have played within Ghana, if, if that is anything to go by, if yeah. you weigh them, they will probably weigh heavier than you, he will. You could actually also look at that as, because one of the key challenges we've had with EC uh, chairpassing or deputies had been the fear that they are politically tainted. Okay. And, and so if you have somebody who, as you say, is, has, has done more outside than in, in Ghana, then it's, 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 a, it's a difficulty to tag him politically. Uh, and so that could be a, a, a huge plus for him. Um, and then you, you, you look at somebody like uh, Kathleen Adi. Kathy was also a CDD, uh, was responsible for their Afrobarometer, done a lot of work in terms of the research, but also made a transition into activism. Um, she was very vocal in the times when we had Doom Saw and all those issues. I've hosted her several times on Ghana Connect. Um, she's a passionate individual when it comes to good governance, etc. No wonder she got appointed to the NCCE, where recently I was moderating a panel, and she was on that panel, and she, you should see her passion. Although she was, she was at NCCE, she was still raising fundamental issues about government's resourcing of these agencies. And you mm. think that, you know, she should keep quiet. When you're appointed, you're appointed that you appointed, can't you know. speak. Right. And she was quite forceful. I mean, that, mm. you know, they should be just properly adequately funded. And so she can hold her own. Um, and, and yes, I, she brings to that. She's young. I think she's the youngest of, of the lot. And I'm not sure if Ghana uh, or if, you know, the stage is set for another younger person like um, Charlotte Ose, for example. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, what, what's, what sort of vibes do you pick up from? For, for her, I mean, she's not being considered for the chairperson's role, more Deputy. for the, the, the supporting role as, a, as one of the two deputies. So possibly that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but yes, in, in a country like Ghana, those issues are important for people. Uh, that will come up. But then you have to bypass that and look at this credibility, her credibility, and what she's done in the past. And she has, a, she has a, quite an impressive record in terms of public advocacy mm. um, and public service, not the formal public service, but you know, advocating for issues that eventually benefits the, the, public. the public. And so yeah. that will go for her. But it will be also interesting to see how she does as a young person. People forget. But Dr. Farag Jan in 1992 was, was pretty young too. Um, and he was assisting a, a, a substantive chair, and then he eventually took over and was there for, for two decades um, plus. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it, the fact that she's young shouldn't be a disqualifying mm. uh, issue. OK. But, 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 but in the introduction that we did, Evans, and this is, this is not just limited to us. Other people have said that uh, Professor Henrietta uh, seems to be you know, the, 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 uh, the favorite. favorite? Is, yes. is, is, is 
I mean, what, what do you see? What, what are sources telling you? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, she, she appears to be the overwhelming favorite. Uh, no, from what I understand, no firm decision has been taken yet, except to say that the president has consulted uh, quite widely um, about that. And, and okay, another thing that the sources confirmed, though, is that the, the next EC chairperson will certainly be a female woman. So, and if you look at the fact that they For are... For sure, I mean... Yes, that's the, the sources are very firm on that. Okay. And if you consider the fact that they are, are lot, among the list that we just talked about, there are two women there... There are three women. Uh, okay, well, for the deputy. Yes, okay. and you, you, you see Henry Tamay Sabonis standing tall. And also considering the fact that the president, you know, sort of put his whole reputation on the line to fight for her to get on the ICC, mm. um, you, you see why he will be, she will be the favorite. And, and yeah, we expect her, her confirm we expect her to be appointed. Mm. But remember that the president will still have to consult the Council of State, and that could have political have a an impact. But we know that he, the president is not necessarily bound by the advice absolutely, that he gets absolutely. from the council. Absolutely. If, if we are to believe what his his managers, the president's managers and ace and tell us that he's a listening president, he's open to change his mind, etc., etc., mm -hmm. then maybe that could have an impact on, on, <laughs> on who he eventually I like chooses. the smile on your face, Evans, <laughs> when you say that. Uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll leave that. But before I let you go, Evans, what be beside all of these people, what are the sort of qualities? What will be the expectations of Ghanaians? Considering what has happened at the EC yeah. so far, what will Ghanaians be looking out for for someone who wants to fill that position? That position? Yesterday we spoke to the political parties, um, their key stakeholders and all this, and a lot of them, all of them, made the point that they wanted somebody who is neutral, independent-minded, fair, um, above all, um, can hold their own um, or his own. And, and, and in essence, give everybody a hearing. And one of the key concerns that we had essentially was that in the past, both Afarijan and uh, Madame Charlotte Osei were guilty of this according to political parties, mm. that they were too dismissive sometimes when the parties had a, a, a view contrary to what they, they take. And they want somebody who will listen, at least, and factor in their contribution from the onset. Because the parties were of the view that some of the recommendations and suggestions they had raised, if they had been incorporated or accepted early, we would have avoided some of the challenges that we've seen uh, with our elections in the past. And so that is a key criteria for them. And they, for example, the PPP National Secretary said, if you give him the option of settling on Professor Harita Mesa Bonsu mm -hmm. and Dr. Akwete, he will settle for Dr. Akwete. His reason is that he sees Akwete more as a, as, a, as some, uh, um, much more involved. Much more involved. Much more. They've seen him. They've interacted with him because he's that they, they do a lot of work with the political parties. They know him, etc. And, and so he settled for that. The NDC hasn't had a say yet, and yet they issued a statement yesterday. Um, in, they still want to fight the removal of Charlotte Say. And yesterday they were clear on that, that they are rank and foul. Mm. They are, uh, Evans, let me, uh, let me just agitated. interrupt you uh, 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 briefly. Sorry about that. Uh, we need to quickly speak to Dr. Eric Odro's side before we lose him on the line. Uh, he's a governance expert. He will also help us, you know, shed some light on just the issue that Evans was speaking about. Doc, thank you so much for your time and, and good afternoon. I'm sure that you've heard about the names that have popped up already, have you? Yes, I have. W w which one are, are you going for, if you have any? Uh, any of them qualify. Hmm. Any of them qualify, but it appears that some qualify more than others. Do you agree? No, I, I do agree to the extent that um, the immediate past EC chairperson was a woman or a female, and I would go for a female replacement so that we have um, a lot of women in the key positions in Ghana. So I that take it Professor, I Professor uh, Mensa Bonsu is, 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 your, is your person then? Well, I mean, yes, Professor, Professor Henry Tamesa Bonsu is okay because it's also, you know, the caliber of EC chair we need now should mm -hmm. be someone who can combine law, governance, and public administration. Mm -hmm. Because if you have never managed a public institution before, if you have never occupied an administrative position in the public sector before, you'll be found wanting. Okay. Looking at the findings of the committee that recommended the uh, backing of the former EC chair. So I think that 
Some say it's a better boat too. Has been a dean of the law faculty before. She's been the head of the next year before. So to some extent, I would say that she has that administrative experience, and she can combine it with law. So as being a female, I would go for a female dean. Mm. Evans was just telling me about uh, what some of uh, our sources, uh, his sources, have said, and also about how the president himself personally supported her bid to be at the ICC some time ago. Wouldn't persons on the other political divide, especially if you take the NDC, who, by the way, like Evans was saying, are still fighting the removal of Charlotte Tosse, wouldn't they begin to see some sort of partisan or begin to associate uh, somebody like her to to? you know, the presidency or to the NPP, you know? No, I, I, I don't think that that should happen. Uh, because the position of a political, definitely you may have a regime appointed and a chairperson. But that does not make the chairperson a political person. So we should not read politics into this. What we should all root for should be someone who would have Ghana at heart, someone who would be able to conduct free, fair, and credible elections Someone who will be able to hold the nation together. Someone who will be able to understand the politics of our time. Mm. So that that person will be able to work as a team. At the, at the bring the credibility uh, mm. deficit that the EU has suffered in the past year back to this. Okay. Well, b finally, before I let you go, uh, speaking of political allegiance or alignment or so, uh, the, uh, one, of the one of the members of, on Parliament's Judicial Committee has been speaking in Parliament today, and one of, the, one of the things that he said is that there is a case pending before the Supreme Court, so he doesn't see why the presidency is in a hurry, so to speak, to fill that position. He also says that for someone like uh, Professor Henrita, she has made some comments which he believes uh, aligns her somehow to the NPP. Do you see a problem coming from there? No, 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 there is no problem there. In fact, uh, the case before the Supreme Court uh, is there. But if you take a case before a court, unless those parties, uh, the parties who sent the case to court, have filed a notice to, uh, uh, to prevent the president from appointing uh, mm. a new dish to replace the case. And the court has affirmed that. So can the president can go ahead to appoint a new Right. And then the issue of the comment that Professor Elizabeth was is, um, alleged to have made. It is neither here nor there. Everybody makes we are all Ghanaian. I think we should politicize this position and rather continue to work towards getting somebody who can identify us. Don't mm. comment, even if it links the person to the NPP. I mean, everybody belongs to one political party or the other. The most important thing is the person is expected to work in a very professional manner. And the way I have told her, as an astute criminal lawyer, she will be very professional if the president gives her the post. But my view is that just somebody who understands public administration in addition to law mm. and governance. Dr. Eric uh, Odros, uh, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. He's a governance expert helping us uh, put this matter into perspective. Evans, you've heard him, yeah. and I'm sure you have your comments as well regarding the reaction coming from Parliament. Yeah, of course. I mean, the, the parliamentarians and the politicians, you expect, because purely is been the nomination is coming from a president who is not, is not on their party's ticket, they will raise concerns, mm. which is what the NPP did when they were in opposition, which is what you can expect the NDC to do. Um, also because of the circumstances surrounding the vacancy, which is what they are fighting. So you can expect that. And so I'll be surprised, in fact, if, if Harita Mensah Bonsu is confirmed or appointed by the president and is made public, that you won't find some NDC elements opposing that. I think that is as normal to expect. Uh, but the, the, the test, really, will be how she, if she gets nominated, runs the affairs of the Electoral Commission. Mm. I mean, I make this point, and I, I emphasize it. Charlotte say when she was appointed, the NPP opposed it. But Charlotte say supervised an election that delivered the MPP's biggest victory and delivered to the NDC mm. its biggest defeat. Um, and so it doesn't really matter. It's what the person, you, you can't really rig a Ghana election. I think it's, we've gone to the point where it's nearly impossible. It's impossible to do it. Well, we'll, we'll believe that. And, and Evans, thank you so much for coming. But what it means then is that 
with these four people, does it mean automatically that if you don't get to be at the top job that you get to occupy the deputy position? From what we hear, um, is most likely Harry Tamei Sabonsu will become the chair. And then uh, Dr. Kwete, HQC Prempe, uh, Kathleen Adi, any of two, any two of them, um, will become the two other deputies or sister. That's what we hear. Okay. I mean, but we also have to wait to see how this pans out. Speculation in, in, at this in point. Uh, informed speculation, by the way. Yeah. Evans, thank you so much once thank again. You, Evans Mensa is editor here at Joe News and also head of our political desk there. I believe that you had some very good uh, thought-provoking uh, information uh, that will keep you on. Now, let's...